welcome. I'm glad you're here today at the State Line Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's good to see each one of you here. I want to give a special welcome to our visitors. We're glad you're here as well. And uh, you, the folks that are viewing online in different ways, we're grateful that you're able to join us for our worship service. Uh, our Pathfinders today are going to uh, be presenting our worship service. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you're blessed. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm going to tell you a story. Let's see if we have a picture. Um, we went on a walk one Sabbath afternoon, and um, we were up in the vineyard above our property, and we came across the sprinkler pipes for the vineyard, and one of them is a, is a hole that you have to reach down in to turn the sprinklers on and off. And down in that hole, there was a mouse. And he was probably, I don't know, maybe a foot down. It's not switching now. There we go. So you can see that's, that's down in the, in the hole. So he was stuck down there. Now, now, I don't really want a mouse in my house, but I don't have anything against ma mice out in the field. Um, they're actually kind of cute. And, you know, they have a purpose. So my wife, Maria, got the idea to get a a little branch that was there, a tumbleweed branch, and she put it down in the hole. And we went on further on our walk. And when we came back, he was gone. So what do you suppose happened while we were on our walk? You think he got out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had made a way for him to get out, right? Um, we're all kind of like that mouse because we live in a world of sin and we get trapped. We can get trapped in our sin. And the Bible tells us in Zechariah 3, 9, I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. So what's that one day? In one day, he's going to remove the iniquity of the land. Can you tell me what, what do you think, what day was that? Get your attention? What day do you think? He said that I'll remove the iniquity of the land in one day. I think he was talking about the day that Jesus died on the cross. And he bore our sin and he made a way for us to get out of the hole. Right? And in the same passage, it says that Jesus is like a branch. Now, it's not necessarily the same as the branch we put in the hole, but we have other stories where Jesus was the ladder to heaven, right? So he made a way. He came down into our pit and made a way for us to have freedom and life, just like we made a way for the mouse. So you can think about that this week. And you can go back to your seats. Thanks for listening.
please turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. pretty impressive so give me a second we got to get our PowerPoint put up here and and some notes so while we're waiting for that if you finish that up while we're waiting for that I'd like the pathfinders to stand up and turn around and, and face the audience please every one of you stand up now all of you out there who have been a pathfinder and are a pathfinder now you stand up i want them to see how many people came before them how much this church believes in this organization that is a lot almost i would say from what i see more than half of the folks in here have been pathfinders please everybody sit down So, do we have our PowerPoint up yet? Thank you. So the question is, is what is a Pathfinder? What do Pathfinders do? 
It's basically, for those who don't know anything about Pathfinders, Pathfinders is a co-ed kids club similar to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Basically, the entire process is based on key Christian principles. Amen. Key Christian principles. Honesty, integrity, fairness, togetherness, teamwork, and a firm desire to display these things with a Christ-like character. Basically, that's what Pathfinders is. Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So parents, you had a hand in who these kids are when they first come to this organization. Because you've done that work. You have trained them up in the way they should go. We strive to take the work the parents have done in training of their kids very seriously and attempt and hope that we as Pathfinder leaders can take what those parents created and, and maybe mold it just a little bit differently. And I like the teamwork part of it because to me that's what Pathfinders is primarily about. You've learned how to do things for Christ as a group. A body, the body of Christ. Amen. So, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. I believe we're training these kids up to become the proper bodies of the, of the body of Christ, which each of you out here are. You each have a, a, a goal or a, a part of that body of Christ, do you not? These kids are learning what their part of the body of Christ is. First, first Corinthians, Colossians. Look at that, I didn't give enough there. 22, or 12, verse 27. Know ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. These kids are the body of Christ. They are the future body of Christ. And I talk fairly loosely about being part of the team that runs these, but I'm really not. I'm a fake pathfinder. I got a shirt that's got some things on there but I'm not a pathfinder. This is your pathfinder. My wife, Tina, she's been a pathfinder for many years. She has been a, a counselor for many years at uh, Church, Bears. Church Bearers Club out of the university church. And then our pastor caught a hold of Tina a couple of years ago and said, hey, I heard you were a pathfinder. We need a Pathfinder Club again. Is there anybody in this audience, and just a show of hands, that can remember when the Pathfinder Club started in this church? There's at least one. 1954. We're going to go on to that. But, to begin with, I want to know from Tina, the actual director of your Pathfinder group, what she thinks Pathfinders are. Well, to me, Pathfinders is most importantly, speak up. sorry, most importantly, I think the Pathfinder Club is to um, teach the kids about Christ and also to teach them to be leaders uh, for the church that's coming up and, and even now they can, they can lead and they've seen that with what they've done this morning um, and it's nice to to get them out in front so that when they do get even older, that they're not afraid to get up front and work for God. Any more? Nope. <laughs> okay. And we've already said the Pathfinder Law and the Pledge, and we've sang the song. Thank you for your participation in that. How many of you remembered all the words since we didn't have them up on the board? Yeah, you know, I was a Pathfinder back when I was 10, 11, 12. And when she started doing this and I went, I'm going, yeah, I know those words. How do I know those words? Because we sing them all the time, don't we? So I want to just do a little touch on the history of Pathfinders. 
Pathfinders is a group that actually started off as junior MVs, not Pathfinders. And originally, in the 1800s, I think he wants to use that one. In the, in the 1800s, the Pathfinders was only for boys. That's where it started. But as it kind of progressed and, and changed, they, they brought in and the girls. And honestly, I don't remember when. Um, uh, as you can see on the list up there, even the master guide didn't officially become a master guide until 1927. Um, vocational honors were introduced. First JMV Pathfinder camp, like uh, Myvedin. Most of you know what Myvedin is, but Myvedin is a, a conference owned or a place for them to do camping and stuff. The very first one was in Idlewild, um, California, purchased in 1932. I had to, to Google it. I had no idea where Idlewild is, and it is down in Southern California. Um, matter of fact, I believe it's in the hills up out of, uh, oh, I apologize. I should have written it down. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Pardon? It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. A couple of the other things that I think are important, are interesting. The emblem was designed in 1946 by John H. Hancock. Did you want to talk? I'm oh, sorry. Um, in 1948, Helen Hobbs designed and made the Pathfinder flag. And as far as I know, it has never changed. Yeah, it should still be the same flag that she created. And then in 1949, Henry Braw Berg, Berg sorry, um, wrote the Pathfinder song. And I know that for a while they took one of the words out, um, but the way we sang it today was the original. And I believe that even in the conference they've put the, where's Benjamin? They've put the one word back into it. The word kindness? Yes. I believe is, is the odd one. So, and then actually, the uh, General Conference didn't even authorize Pathfinder Clubs until 1950. And so you think of the fact that Blue Mountain Pioneers in this church started in 1954, you think that this church thought it was important. Yeah. And most don't re even realize the Pacific Northwest, this was the very first Pathfinder group in the entire Pacific Northwest. Nobody else had done it. This church started it. Amen. And this church actually held the largest Pathfinder group for many, many years until the, I believe it was either Wailapu or the Torchbearers took over the number one uh, quantity of people. So Pathfinders is a very important part of our church. Amen. Yeah, go through some of this primary reasons and then we'll go into the pledge. So our primary reason for being a club is to teach the young kids to be confident, knowledgeable, and Christ-like. We want them to know their Bible and to remember the lessons that Christ, um, the lessons of Christ that their parents have taught them. And then it's your job as a church family to see Christ in, in our kids and know that even though they're young, the older people can still learn things from the kids. You can do off the screen now if you want. All right, so now we're just gonna go through the meaning of the pledge and the law. In the per first part, by the grace of God, only as we rely on God, can God to help us, can we do his will. We can't do anything without God. And you now it's one thing we always have to remember. You wanna do the next one? I will be pure. 
I will fill my mind with everything that is right and true and spend my time in activities that will build a strong, clean character. Amen. One thing for the kids, it's important to remember to always put good things in your mind. Because then when you get older, you don't have all this garbage every once in a while popping back into your head. So always try and remember to put God first and put his thoughts first. And if something isn't quite right, recognize it right away and leave it. Everything that we put in our hearts and our minds through our eyes and our ears makes us who we are. So it's important that we do and, and have. And you know, your parents have already started you on that path. I will be kind. I will be considerate and kind, not only to my fellow man, but also to all of God's creation. Yeah, and all of God's creation, right? This is one of my favorites because I love animals and I just never can understand how anybody can be mean to them in any way. So I like that, that it includes your fellow beings and your the animals that God created for us to give us enjoyment. I will be true. Uh, I will be true. I will be honest and upright in study, work, and play, and can always be counted upon to do my very best. Amen. And that's important to remember, even when there's nobody around watching you, you want to make sure that you do what's right and you do um, honest things because God is always there. And he, he is the one that we are truly trying to follow. Right. I will keep the Pathfinder law. I will seek to understand the meaning of the law and will strive to live up to its spirit, realizing that obtaining obedience to law is essential in every organization. And I know a lot of people like to throw out the law or say if you keep it, it's legalistic. But it all goes hand in hand. I mean, if we love God, we want to please him and we want to do what, what he's put there for us to, to where he knows that if we follow it, we'll be the happiest we can be. And it's, it's the spirit of the law. It's not just the letter of the law. Even Christ told us, it says to, to, to go by the spirit of the law, what the law really truly means towards our fellow man. I will be a servant to God. I will pledge myself to serve God first, last, and best in everything I am called upon to do or be. Amen. Yeah. For that. Okay. And a friend to man. I will live to bless others and do unto them as I would have them do unto me. And I think it's important that we, that we look for people that might need a little extra help or just a kind word to them. And that's the way we can start showing God to others. I remember when the, uh, the Pharisee came to Jesus Christ and said, which is the greatest of the laws? What do you say? The Father, remember that our uh, honor, yeah, God. love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy being, and love thy neighbor as thyself. How do we love our neighbor as ourself? But to to make them important to not only us, but to but to show them that God is important to them too. So that's that's. Enough to be said. <laughs> okay. Pathfinder Law explained. Keep the morning watch. I will have prayer and personal Bible study each day. Obviously, that's not just for Pathfinders, is it? Nope. And that's important because I have noticed when I put God first and get up in the morning and pray and read, my day goes so much better. It may not be... I still may have difficulties, but I handle them better. 
And so we always need to remember, too, to ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us in everything that we do through the day. Yeah. Do my honest part. By the power of God, I will help others and do my duty and my honest share wherever I may be. I guess if you're, if you're at a job, don't expect other people to do things. If there's something that's not quite pleasant to do, you know, we should get up and do it first. And that way we can represent God in, to our fellow uh, employees care for my body. That's an important part of this, isn't it? Yes, it is. I will be temperate in all things and strive to reach a higher standard of physical fitness. Which is something that Pathfinders does deal with on a fairly regular basis. Praise Keep a level eye. I will not lie, cheat, or deceive and will despise dirty talk. What's the rest mm, of it? I don't know. <laughs> We missed the, uh, those. You can see the tops of the letters, but I didn't apparently get it in the right spot. Sorry about that. So, go on. Be courteous and obedient. I will be kind and thoughtful of others, reflecting the love of Jesus in all of my association with others. I work in medical care, and sometimes you have uh, very questionable people come in. And it's, I always try, even with them, to maybe be a little extra kind to them so that I can show Jesus to them. And I kind of wonder what you all kind of think, because I, when I see the word obedient as an adult, I think, no, nah, I'm an adult, I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. Is that true? No, obedient isn't a slavery style of an issue. The obedience that this is talking about is obedient to the love of Jesus Christ and everything that entails. The people that you're around and the things that you do. You know, kids, you're just starting to learn all this stuff. But being obedient isn't a negative. It's a positive because we get to be like Christ when we are obedient. Mm. Walk softly in the sanctuary. That's a really important one. Go ahead. Um, in any devotional exercise, I will be quiet, careful, and reverent. And we do try and teach the kids when we're in the sanctuary that we need to keep our voices down and we don't be yelling and making all kinds of noise. Because even when nobody's in here and even when church isn't going on, it's still a reverent place. So reverence isn't just for our kids either, is it? No. Okay, our basic objectives for a Pathfinder organization. We've kind of touched upon this, but we're going to build upon this, so we're going to reiterate this a little bit. A spiritual and social role model. That's what we're wanting our kids to learn. A spiritual and social role model. Because we do have to live in this world, don't we? With this, they are expected to develop a high moral principle, principles, attitudes of love, care, and determination. These are all built into all the activities that we do. And just so you know, I'm not making this up. I didn't write this stuff. This came from the official Pathfinder website. <laughs> so this isn't Ken up here talking. This is the Pathfinder organization that's been here for over 100 years. It is important for us to develop this moral principles, attitudes of love and care for, and, de and especially determination. Because I don't know about you, but from the time I was their age till the time I'm my age, I think the di most difficult part of life is be determined that you're going to succeed with Jesus Christ. That you're going to de be determined to not fail him. So... Some of the things we actually talk, that we actually do are um, activities that are carried out in the public program and a club program, and they're subdivided into three primary uh, tripod of focus: the spiritual, the mental, and the physical. 
Those are the three primary areas that we deal with on our path with our Pathfinder kids. And we're going to start with the physical. Go ahead. Just read it. Yeah. As part of the official program, visual, physical activities is valued per the philosophy of the club, stating that juveniles between 10 and 15 years are at a stage of growth and very rapid physical development, hiking, running, climbing, field games, tracking, and others. And I think this is even more important right now when we have so much electronic stuff that takes the kids' attention, and even the adults, that we need to make sure we have time for being out in nature. Um, isn't it Ellen White that says nature is the second Second Bible-like second lesson. Thank you. Yeah. So when we go camping, uh, we always try and make sure that we have a hike planned out for the day. And a lot of the honors, it's they're physical, so the kids get to to get up and do things. Um, About to do. One of the honors that we have coming up this next week is archery. And you wouldn't think that archery was that physical, but it takes a lot of strength to shoot those bows. Go ahead. Physical activities are in essence, within the official philosophy, entertain and attract children and adolescents and allow to be jointly developed their mental and spiritual aspect. So basically what it's saying is that uh, to get more kids into our, our club, we want them to understand that it's going to have activities. You know, being a Pathfinder isn't, a, isn't everything about the honors. You don't just sit down and do nothing. You know, the many honors that, that they do in there, a lot of them are physical and they're fun. And I'm sorry, but there's nothing wrong with having fun, is there, kids? You're not the kids that decide that being bored is all the time is, is fun, is it? No, doing stuff is fun. What else does doing stuff? Well, doing stuff for, with these kids is teaching them things. They get to learn how to do things that they, you know, we, we saw in the video, the, the uh, pictures that, that Benjamin brought up. They got to build airplanes. Now they were just little balsa wood airplanes, but you know, that was something they got to do with their hands and their mind all at the same time. And they had fun doing it. And they had fun doing it. Good. So the next section of this is the mental framework. A part of mental development is encouraged youth to study and develop classes and specialties, which are analogs to series and school subjects although also understand the physical and spiritual aspects, classes and specialties bring a greater benefit to the mental explorer context, providing a large, larger, er, sorry, larger learning about various subjects. So Pathfinders, we don't want them to just be all physical because learning is a very important part of, of what they do. Um, through the study and, and looking through this stuff, I've read some of the Adventist Home and the uh, um, guidance child for guidance. child guidance book. Ellen White tells us very specifically that our kids' mental framework is very important as well as the physical. And in the mental, she's talking about learning how to do things with your hands, how to be able to provide for yourself, how to work thing, how to work the land, how to grow a garden, how to fix a fence, how build to a build a house. Yeah, these, even though they're the, those physical, they're also extremely mental as well. So they work completely together. So being able to help our kids learn many different types of things will help them later on decide what is really important to them for a life's work. Go ahead. These are all the different um, 
sections, I guess, of honors. There's arts and crafts, health and science, household arts, nature, outdoor industries, outreach, creation, recreation. or sorry, recreation, vocational, and there's 517 honors. And it, this nice thing, out of all those 517 honors, every one of them brings Christ into it as we're teaching it to the kids. So I wonder, and maybe Mr. Tan can say yes or no, is there any Pathfinder that has all 517? <laughs> no. That's a huge diversity of ideas and thoughts and things that we can do with these kids. 517 different cool things that these kids get to learn. And I never even thought about this, so we don't have a microphone for them, but I want to hear some, what is, what is some of your favorite things that you've got to do? Okay. Hand it to Lily, she's... Gold panning. Gold panning? Gold panning. The duct tape on her. Duct tape on her. I don't know about anybody else, but uh, duct tape on her can be kind of fun. And I heard, and I've only been here the story, sorry, I didn't get to participate. But I think they even have part of that honor is you have to make a boat mm -hmm. where you can actually get in it and float, all with duct tape. Kind of cool. So the, the, uh, the honor is to do something creative with it. And, and when Oliver and I did it, we built a boat. Built a boat? And then we took it down and floated it together. That was yeah. down in Pendleton. Okay. Yeah, um, so normally you build a boat that can float in the river right. and that can hold a certain amount of weight. So we decided we build a big boat that can hold a person. Yeah, so good deal. So we did that and then the leader actually got to preach in it. Oh, that's cool. Got to build the whole boat somebody sat in. Yeah, that was the pastor from, youth pastor from Pendleton yeah. that was here. And it actually floated? Yes. Yes, All right. it did. The airplane honor. Airplane honor. Okay. That's pretty neat. The cultural, the cultural diversity. The food was amazing. Cultural diversity. I like yeah. the horsemanship honor. The horsemanship. See, these kids have done some stuff. Yeah, Fred's even got one. <laughs> I can remember when we did the dogs and cats honors too. Dogs and cats. Learned a lot about them. Yeah. We've done the dog honor. We did the dog honor, yeah. The hot air balloon honor. The hot air balloon honor. That's something that uh, is pretty interesting. Anybody else? Okay. So as you can see, there are out of 517 honors? Biking honor. The which honor? Biking. Biking honor. Okay. Have we done that one yet? Nope. No. Haven't done that one. I haven't done that one yet. I think you have to like, ride 40 miles or something. 50, 50, 50 miles. 50 miles? Yeah. Maybe we'll have to work up to that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, with so many different um, possibilities, the kids do enjoy doing them. So, and obviously, they work in both a physical and mental capacity, and they also do what? They feel a spiritual capacity as well. Benjamin. Go ahead. Um, we didn't do this in class, but I have the uh, scuba diving honor. I guess my wife does too, but she's not in Pathfinders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have that patch. Well, and as you can see from Tina, step out so the camera can see you. She's got a few honors on there, you know, and with seven years of doing it. Oh, but ahead. this isn't many. I mean, they've got ones that are wider and some of them have two sashes so they can have all their honors on them. So kids, you got a ways to go. Two sashes is the goal. <laughs> Every one of you are gonna have to have two sashes, you hear? All right. So go ahead and read this up there. First Timothy 4:12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, 
in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And I'll tell you a story um, that I was pretty impressed with. This last campery where we went up to Republic, they had different stations. And I wasn't too sure about all of it when we first started. Um, the first station that we had was toothpicks and marshmallows. And I'm thinking, how are you going to, you know, what does this have to do with God and, and Sabbath and all this stuff? So I watched. And the kids, they built these structures. And some of them were pretty big. And at the end of it, um, the leader, he asked the kids, so how do you think you can apply this to God? And there was a little boy there. I guess he wasn't too little. He was, I would guess, about 12. And he said, when we first started building the structures, they were really wobbly. And then we started putting support pieces on them, and they got, um, they got sturdy and strong. He says, that's the way we are. When we don't have God in our life, we are wobbly. Um, but when God comes in, he's the support, and we can be strong in him. And I thought, wow, you know, this kid got that, and I had no clue what they were trying to do with this activity that they were doing. But it's like that's how God taught. He taught with um, things that the people were familiar with, and he taught biblical lessons from it. And that's what I like about Pathfinder so much. And the fact that these young folks, sometimes they have a take on a subject that we as an adult, it just goes right over our head. They can see through things differently than we can. And how many times do we negate that? Or how many times do we ignore that? What is the potential for young folks to be a important part of our church and our lives? Well, let's think about it. The, the verse you have up there is because of Timothy. Timothy was a young man that was taught by his parents specifically his mother and his grandmother. They got that, that early part of their life that was very important to them, to him specifically. And he became a, a follower of Christ because of it. Um, we know for a fact from the Bible that they called him a youth. The term youth biblically usually means somewhere between 13 and 20 years of age. So the first time that Paul, and remember the story when Paul went into, was it Lystria? Mm -hmm. And uh, they stoned him to death and they yanked him out of the city and uh, thought he was dead and they all walked away. But the, the followers, one of those followers was Timothy. And, uh, and then all of a sudden Paul popped up he was alive. Well, I believe he was dead. And I believe that God brought him back to life because his work wasn't done yet. Timothy saw this. That was a couple of years before Paul came back and started to work with him and use him as a disciple. So Timothy was a very young man. 14, 15, 16 years of age. Somewhere in that area. We don't know for sure. But he was young. He wasn't an old person. John the Beloved. What's it say he was? 16-ish, about when he became a disciple of Christ. Yeah. This is a man who, even Christ says, the Beloved, that he was beloved of Christ. He was 16-ish, somewhere in around the 16 age, when he was called by Christ to be a disciple. By the time Christ died, he was still only about 20 years of age. So don't ever think that you're too young to start sharing God with other people. And to do things amazing for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, they do say, if it's not impossible, it's not God calling you to do it. So tell us about Samuel. 
Well, Samuel was very young when his mom took him to the temple um, to leave him there and to start working for God. And what, maybe five, six? Yeah, they said that the Bible t tells us that he was just weaned. Yep. So most likely around six years of age. And then they believed that he was about 12 years old when God talked to him, when God called him and he wasn't, didn't know that it was God and Eli told him that it was God. And what, what is basically God doing at 12 years of age with this young man? At 12 years of age, God decided he was going to be a prophet of, of the Lord. At 12. That's pretty impressive. Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> well, Sorry. and then when Eli did finally pass away for him and him become the prophet, he was about 20. About 20 years of age when he, did, when he became the, uh, the primary for God. This is young people. And you know what? They're not the only ones either, are they? How about the history of our church? How many young people dealt with the history of our church? Yeah, let's talk about pioneers. John Lothborough. He accepted the Sabbath in 1852 at the age of 20. J.N. Andrews. He was 16 when he accepted the Sabbath. 1850, age 21, he became a pastor. So by the time he's 21, he'd been doing the ministry for five years and he became a full-time pastor from 16 to 21. That's pretty impressive, folks. These are young folks. And our early pioneers listened to them because they had the Spirit of the Lord in them, didn't they? Uriah Smith. He was a Millerite at age 12, and he accepted the Sabbath in 1852 at age 20. So he, he accepted the words of Jesus Christ talking about the second coming of, of God, what they thought turned out to be the great disappointment, but he was 12 years old when he knew that was the correct message. Stephen Haskell. He accepted the Sabbath in 1853 and started preaching the year before. He was about 20. Ellen Harmon. Okay. You should know about this. Ellen was 17 in 1844 during the Great Disappointment, and her first version was shortly after. Vision was sh shortly after. And she, even before the Great Disappointment, she was, um, had a heart that just wanted to follow God. She was so worried that she wouldn't be ready. Um, and she, so she kept following and kept even after the great disappointment, she didn't give up. And that's important. You know, there will be disappointments in your life. And you have to be willing to just trust God through them. And these were the leaders of our church, folks. These are the people that took us from nothing, literally, I believe, 50 to 100 members that believed after the great disappointment that there was still something worth having. Many of these were young people. Anybody ever been to Washington, um, New, Hampshire. New Hampshire, to the first church, the first Adventist church? If you, don't, if you ever get the chance, you need to go. That is one of the most inspiring um, times that I've ever had in my entire Adventist uh, life. A lot of these folks, these young people that started Washington Church were not even 20 years of age. Before 1888 message of Christ our righteousness, they had accepted it already as a church. As a whole denomination, they accepted it before 1888. They were young people. They were on fire for the Lord, and they were leading out. And that is what we're teaching, what we teach our children for. That's what Pathfinders is for, for spiritual part of it. Go ahead and read. The leadership role is to help young people understand and love God and to watch over the church and the next generation of youth. According to the manual of the Pathfinder Club, the goals and duties of the leadership of the club are... 
encouraging pathfinders to discover their God-given potential and to use their gifts and skills to meet the expectations of the plan of salvation. And maybe some of those skills and are being taught by your, your pathfinder leaders. But you know what? The gifts come directly from the Holy Spirit. And being the fact that you're the body of Christ, those gifts aren't always going to be the same. There's seven of you, eight of you sitting right here, nine. Out of nine, there could be 12 different gifts that are handed out out of the nine of you. Some of you might get more than one. Those are the gifts that this is talking about. So you have skills that are learned as a young person to use the gifts that Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit has given you. Okay. Inspire them to give personal expression of their love for God, uniting with other youth in various extension activities. And that's where we go and do the camperies and the fair. Um, we get together with other clubs and get to learn from what they're doing and we want them to learn from our kids about how we're serving God. And I believe probably the number one priority of our club is the salvation of our children. Go ahead. Which one are you doing? That was that one, so here. Building on the groundbreaking appreciation for a healthy life, enjoy outdoor, outdoor activities, and cultivate in them a love for God's creation. You know, I don't think that a healthy life is all just hiking. Hiking, biking, it's also what we put in our bodies too. It's important for us to have a well-rounded diet for our, for our bodies. Teaching the groundbreaking immersive and interactive skills in order to make the time and talents of the most of the most significant youth. So we basically, I think what this is saying is we have a short time. We do. Pardon? We do. Yeah. <laughs> we have a short time with these kids. You know, typically the age is 10 to 16 or 17. That's not much time, folks. Those of you who are over 50. Don't raise your hands. How fast did you hit 50? Yeah, like that, Ron Honor just showed. And I agree. Like that. We don't have much time with these kids. So go ahead. This? Yep. All right. So in conclusion, young people and everybody else know that now, you are not too young or too old to let God lead your life. Every day, ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you and be willing to surrender everything, everything to Him. And that is from what work you decide to do, even for what plans you want to do for the day. Be willing to let God say, hey, I want you to do this and be willing to say, okay, that's what I'll do today. So nothing is too big or too small to ask God to help you with. And remember to speak to others. Now our mission on this earth is to tell other people about God so that we can take as many people home with us as possible. Amen. Um, and don't be afraid. You know, Philippians 1, 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Um, we just got finished reading a book about, uh, Pavel Goya wrote it. And this is one of the things, well, let me skip up here. He starts his day out every day, and he says, Lord, I make myself available to you today. If you need somebody to be helped, just show me. If somebody needs to hear about you, give me the opportunity and I will do it. 
Show me your plans for today. Make me a blessing. Use me. And that, uh, I thought I wrote where it came down from. Yeah, I thought so too. Sorry, I must have missed that. But just yeah, the book in the spirit uh, and power in the spirit and power by pa Pavel Goya. It's very good and worth reading. Yeah, I uh, agree. He has another quote in there about faith and it says faith does not manipulate God. Faith does not change God's will. Faith changes us. Even when we don't understand what is going on, we still trust him. All right. And like I said, our mission is to share God with other people. And if we're not doing that, we're not, we're not upholding our mission. And you can start right where you're at. I mean, you don't have to go someplace to do it. The people you run into through the day. Um, I got a chance last time I worked, I think Thursday, to pray with a lady. She had lost her grandson in a horrible way. and. I'm not a real outgoing person, um, and, but I had prayed this prayer in the morning and asked God to guide me, and I felt as though he wanted me to pray with her, so I did. So, um, so let us all be pathfinders and find the path to heaven, and I'll leave you with this verse, Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to share your words with the pathfinders and everyone that's here today. I pray that you will guide us and help us to accomplish your mission so that we can go home in your soon coming. Thank you for hearing and answering, and I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Hello, friend. My name is James Ash, and I want to personally thank you for watching our program today. If you would like to see more videos just like this, all you have to do is go to statelineadventmedia.org, and you can watch to your heart's content. And oh, by the way, don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe buttons on each one of our various platforms. Because you see, my friend, this helps us reach more people with the good news of Jesus' soon return. Ministries like this require large teams of people. You would be amazed if you were to see how many people are required to produce each one of our programs. And if you would like to join with us by becoming a ministry partner, you can actually help us reach the unreached with the gospel. All you have to do is go to statelineadventmedia.org slash donate, and you can give us a much needed boost. Most importantly of all, friend, we need your prayers. I assure you that the devil does not like this ministry, and your prayers are what protect and direct what we do here. Once again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts.